Today I'm going to be making baklava, and what you'll need, these are uh, the ingredients you'll need, everything you'll need to make it, um, so you'll be ready to go. So we need a pound of chopped nuts, and we have uh, pistachios, you can use almonds, walnuts, or pistachios, pistachios are the, the best version. Um, this is actually over a pound, so you'll, you'll find out why we get a little bit extra in just a second. You need one pound of filio dough. These are, are out of the box, so they can come up to room temperature. They uh, they are bought in the freezer, and you can buy whatever brand you want. You need a cup of butter, which is two sticks. You need a third of a cup of sugar. You need um, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And then you need these go over here. Uh, you need one third teaspoon of ground. Uh, cloves, which there's not a third of a teaspoon of anything that I could find, so I gave a fourth and just a little bit more. And you need one cup of water, one cup of sugar, a half a cup of honey, and we just use Great Value brand honey. Um, it's easier if you put it in the microwave for like 30 seconds with the lid off, and it softens up, it thins out a little bit more, and it's easier to pour. You need um, two tablespoons of lemon juice, and we use just this the lemon you get over in the uh, produce department. Uh, this is the two tablespoons of lemon. You need one cinnamon stick, and we bought these uh, McCormick ones. Um, you just need one stick out of there. And then you're going to need um, some finely ground pistachios for the the, uh, the garnish on top. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get my butter melted. We're going to chop the pistachios up, just not really fine, not ground up like really fine powder, but just chunky pieces. And um, then I'll be back to show you what we do next. Okay, we've got some steps done in the process. So I've got my oven on 350. I've got a nine by 13, um, I've got a, we call it a lasagna pan, but it's just a, a baking dish. Um, we spray it with a cooking spray. I've got my pistachios all ground up. This is just the leftovers from the one pound. So the big bowl is the one pound. These are just the leftovers and we ground them up for just garnish. So I'm gonna put that to the side. And then I've also melted my butter and I have a brush. So you'll need a brush of some kind to brush uh, your butter. So. What you're going to do is you're going to put your sugar and your cinnamon and your ground cloves all in here and we're just going to mix it up really good because you don't want to be big hunks of cinnamon or cloves so you want to make sure you get it all mixed in there really good love these spoons by the way they're like four or five dollars at walmart i don't know if they still sell them but they should because they were the best things ever Okay, it looks like it's pretty well mixed. I don't see any clumps of anything in there. Yeah, okay. Put this in the sink. So now I'm gonna start working on my filio dough. And sometimes this works out really easy and sometimes it's not so easy. So we'll see, we'll see how it works out. Get a pair of scissors. I'm already struggling, so it's probably not going to go easy. So filio, if you don't know, if you don't know filio, it is really thin layers of pastry. Um, and like I said, they come frozen. And I should also have a damp paper towel. I'll, I mean a damp towel. I'll get that in just a second. Let me get started on this so you'll kind of see what you do. And then um, I'm actually going to show you a couple layers over here. And then I'm going to move over to where I can sit down. And do this because it's a it's a longer process and I don't want to be standing here the whole time. So okay. So the filio dough is in plastic. Like I said, it's just really thin layers of pastry. And if they fit in your pan like they are, you don't have to do anything else. These look like they'll fit perfect, so I'm not gonna do anything. If they were really big sheets, this one comes in two rolls. Um, sometimes they come in bigger sheets. You, you would have to cut them in half just so they fit in your pan. So what we're gonna do, like I said, nine by 13 pan. I'm gonna take one sheet of filio, and it's, like I said, it's really difficult sometimes to get it off. That was folded. Okay, this looks like it's the bottom sheet and they stick to each other really bad. Um, that's why a damp paper towel, is, I mean a damp towel is really nice because it keeps it moist, um, keeps it from sticking as bad. And if it falls apart, it's a little clumpy, it's okay, no big deal. 
So I'm gonna lay this in pieces. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna save that piece one for the second layer. Let's see if I can get one off that's, that's pretty much whole. People actually do this by hand. Roll this filial dough out, I can't imagine. I'm just gonna buy mine from the store. All right, about as good as I'm gonna get that sheet. So I'm gonna lay it in the bottom. And you see it soaks up that, it sticks in that butter really good. And you're doing multiple layers, so it's not like it's, uh, you have to cover every little gap. So now I'm gonna take my butter, even though it looks wet on the bottom, it's not wet on the top yet. So I'm just gonna brush this on the top. until I get it all covered up with butter. Really don't want it sticking on the side, so I'd rather fold it. Okay, and guess what you did? You need another layer on there. I'm wondering if I could get this one on there now. And again, butter on top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this to where I've got eight layers in. Um, I'm on layer two right now. I'm gonna get eight layers on the bottom. And then uh, I'll be back and I'll show you uh, what we do next. Now, while I'm doing the, to do the eight layers, I'm going to move over to the table where I can sit down and do this. So I'll be right back. Okay, right, I've got three in here. I just want to show you, I've got a damp paper towel on top. I put a regular paper towel on the bottom, just keep the table from getting um, wet. Then my filia does on top and I've just got a very damp, I mean, I wrung it out pretty good, dish towel laying on top of it. So when I need a layer, I just pull that off separate out a layer which again you have to kind of fight with make sure you don't have two which i do and but being damp will help separate it a little easier um, as well and then lay this in here and then i usually cover it back up with the towel again okay Okay, so there's the eight layers. So what I'm gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna put a thin layer. I'm just gonna do it by hand. Eh, I better use a spoon. Um, you're just gonna do it, no, I better use it by hand. You're gonna use a thin layer of the mixture 
on top of the filio dough, the eight layers of filio dough. And then what you want to do now, there's the thin layer. You see, it's not, it's not a lot. I mean, you're, cause you're going to get multiple layers in here. Um, you put two more layers of filio. So you put a layer and then butter and then another layer, and then you do the nut mixture again. So there's one and I'm going to put butter on top of it. And then I'll do another one with butter and then another layer of uh, the nut mixture. So I'm basically going to keep repeating this process, like uh, two layers, nut mixture, two layers, nut mixture. Um, until I'm out of nut mixture, basically. So, uh, so this is gonna, it just takes time. So anyway, that's it. Okay, use the last bit of the 
the nut mixture in the bowl. So the top layer is going to be eight layers of filio dough. Um, you know, uh, one layer of butter, one layer of butter. Um, so you put eight on top. I actually, that's all I'm going to use out of the second roll. So I didn't need the second roll, but I, I mean, I could have done thinner layers of the nuts, but, um, but I don't think I, I don't think I put them too thin. So, um, so sometimes if you, depends on how many, uh, how thick a layer you put on there. If you put them really thin layer of the nuts, you, um, you use more of the filio dough. If you make them a little thicker, then, then you use less. So it's really just, just depends on how many you grab. And since we're not weighing them out or measuring them, it's kind of hard to, kind of hard to know. So, so anyway, so I, I did not use, I will not use both rolls but you would have needed some more out of the roll anyway. And I also had to melt another half of a stick of butter um, to have enough to go around too. So, so, yeah. so I'm going to keep on hitting this until I get um, six more after this one. All right, this is what it looks like when you've got all the layers done. It takes a little while. It took, I don't know, half an hour or so, probably somewhere around there. So now you want to go ahead, before you even do anything with it, cut them into 24 squares. So I'm going to use this like little cookie spatula because it's got a really good sharp end, got a good sharp end on it. Um, so if you cut it in half, this is how I figured out to do it. If you cut it in half this way, and then you cut those halves into thirds. And then you cut the side in thirds. And get them as even as you can. I mean, if it's not perfect, you know, it's a big deal. And then you're going to do this one, um, you're going to do four pieces. So I'm going to cut it in half all the way down. It may seem like a convoluted way, but it, at least you get fairly even pieces. And each one of these is going to be cut in half. Almost. It's better to have something that kind of plunges down and cuts because a knife is going to try to drag things and I like to, I'd rather do a like a puncture cut than a dragging cut. Okay, so this is going to go in the oven just like it is for uh, 30 to 35 minutes or until it gets brown on the top and the edges are a little crispy. So I'm going to get this in the oven. I'll actually be back before these come out of the oven because I have to, we have to make the syrup. So I'm just going to add my water and my lemon juice and my sugar and my honey and my cinnamon stick all into a saucepan. And the fun part, the honey. Um, put in a saucepan and bring it to a, a slow boil. You don't want it to like rolling boil, but you do want it to boil. Um, and let it boil for seven minutes. Once the seven minutes is up, take your cinnamon stick out 
and then take it off the heat and just let it set um, until it comes out of the oven. So it'll be cool. It'll give it time to cool off enough to, uh, to pour it over top. So I'm just going to let this um, simmer or start boiling. Once it starts boiling, like I said, start a, start a timer for seven, seven minutes or so, and then it's ready to go. Hey, it's been um, like this this simmer for like seven minutes now. So I'm going to take my little cinnamon stick and I've got a just a paper towel here. I'm going to take it out. Lay it on there and then I'm going to take this off the heat and let it set until uh, the, the baklava comes out of the oven. All right, this is what they look like out of the oven. They're, they're crispy on top and it's been, it was probably about 32 minutes. We ended up leaving it in there a couple extra minutes. So here's the syrup and you're just really going to you're going to spoon it over top of it. I might need a better spoon than this, honestly. Yeah, let me get a spoon that actually has a little scoop or dipper in it. Okay. There we go. And you may not use all of those. So what you're going to do is once you get the syrup on here, um, you're going to put the what, however much, I mean, you don't even have to put a garnish on top if you don't want to. I mean, if you, if you want to, that's great. If you don't, you don't have to, we will, but you don't have to. Um, but once you get the syrup on, you put your garnish on you, um, and then you let it cool for four hours one way or the other. Um, you have to let it cool for four hours before you serve it. So. See any dry patches? I'm gonna try to hit them. No, looks pretty good. Okay. And like I said, I'm just gonna take these, and this is just for look, so you don't want tons. powder probably works better than the big hunks, but and you can put as much or as little as you want so um, so I'm gonna let this cool off and then the next time you see us we'll be trying it out well here we are <laughs> <laughs> it's been um, it's but it's right. been almost four hours. Right yeah. four hours. Yeah. And it's plenty of time to cool off and soak up all the, the syrup. Yes, so. it looks delicious. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether to pick it up with my fingers. You know, I, I don't remember um, how I had it be uh, when we've had it before. Kevin has made this, but it's been a long time ago, and he had never made a video of it. And that last time I made it with, uh, I think it was pecans or walnuts. Instead of Instead pistachios. Of pistachios. Well, mine just fell all over the place. It does. Hmm. It's good. It doesn't, it's amazing how little um, cinnamon and clove it has in it. Mm -hmm. But you can really taste it. Yes, you can. Even though it really doesn't have that much in there. No. So don't go overboard on the clove or it'll be too much. No. In the filio dough, it's nice and crispy, but it's not too crispy. Mm -hmm. The pistachios give it a lot of flavor. The pistachios are strong. So, but what Kevin was trying to say is if you don't like a certain nut, if you don't like a pistachio, or then you can use something else. Yeah, I personally would prefer this with a different nut. Mm -hmm. Because pistachios are just not my favorite. Um, it probably tastes better to me with like pecans or something. Right. But, and, and but I it think is good. This would be really good with pecans. Yeah. I think this is the traditional. Yes. Pistachios. Yes. The, but, with, um, yeah. But I think um, 
Uh, last time I made it either with pecans or wands. I don't remember which one. They look the same when you're looking at the pictures. And you can uh, you can put both in there. You can uh, mix yeah, them you together can mix, and yeah. put both. Yeah, yeah. You could have done half pistachio, half walnuts. But this is not an incredibly sweet dessert. Mm, no. They really, the only sweetness you get is a little bit of that sugar and the syrup. Mm. And, um, and From the honey. honey. Yeah. And that's really it. I mean, you got some sugar in the where the nuts are, you know, that topping in, in the middle. But that's, right. that's about the most sweet you get, but it's good. It is good. I like it. Mm -hmm. And it feeds a lot of people. I have 24 slices of this, and I think one's probably one or two at the most is all you want to eat. Oh, well, yeah. Now, when we store it, do we store it in the refrigerator? Um, it didn't say how to store it. So, <laughs> I was thinking an airtight container somewhere would probably find There's nothing in there that's going to spoil. I was thinking when we made it way back, we kept it in the refrigerator. Really? I there's, not, there's nothing to spoil. No, it, so. it's, I think it's just your preference of how you want to eat it. Do you want to eat it cold or do you want to eat it at room temperature? Yeah. Most people probably do eat it at room temperature though, don't they? Yeah, I have no clue. Uh, I don't know. Well, it's delicious. It turned out really good. If you do use pistachios, just know if you buy the unshelled, you're going to spend a fortune on them. They're expensive. We found yeah. these and they did not have them in the uh, baking aisle at our Walmart. Now, different parts of the country, they might, but here they just don't. Uh, we had to go to the, um, the bakery produce. Yeah, the yeah. produce bakery. Right, and we bought unshelled, so they cost twice they as much. bought shelled. Or shelled, <laughs> I mean, sorry. Yeah. Shelled, so they cost twice as much. Yeah, because they're shelling. Yeah, they, it seems like they were like $8 about <laughs> Something yeah. like that. Ridiculous. So but. you could get your own. That's probably why we didn't do pistachios before. Probably. It's because it's a lot more expensive, they were expensive. a lot more trouble yes. to do to do them. Right. Um, whereas walnuts and pecans, you can just buy them. You know, mm -hmm. It's not that big a deal. So it's good. Mm -hmm. uh, love the texture. Love the crunchiness of the of the layers. I think it layered really well. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. It just it just takes a little time, time to get to those layers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you have another way, if you've ever made baklava, if you have other ingredients you add, or um, you've tried another nut that you like better, let us know in the comments below because we would love to hear from you. And thanks for watching.